Welcome back to my channel. This is Carol Robin King and I told you last week that I would do a trees part two for you uh, to show how to do bunches of trees like a forest or something. Um, this is not going to be an actual painting. It's just sort of how to get different textures in trees and I've got my little sponges back that I had uh, the other day and then I've got my rigger brush and I'm going to wet it with a mop because I I want to do a, a little bit of sky just because it's easier to do the sky and the background woods before you start painting your trees so I'm not getting this terribly wet just wet enough to put a little bit of sky color in here and we'll take some cerulean blue and and I'll gray it down a little bit with Payne's gray okay just just a little bit of color so that you can tell that the background behind the trees isn't just stark white it does it does help And then I will come in with my sponge and put in my actual background, which is just going to be some of these grays that I pre-mixed. These are the trees that are way out in the distance. They're way out there and they're not part of the landscape that we're going to be seeing up front. And in order for those to look fairly realistic, you do want to add some stems or uh, trunks. Why do I keep calling them stems? Trunks off in the distance. This just gives us a little bit of background to fill in. Maybe this tree kind of fell over. And you can change, vary the colors too. This is going to lighten. Watercolors will lighten about 30% lighter. If you don't want it to shift or to bleed as much, you can thicken up your paint so it's not quite as watery. Which obviously I didn't do there, but that was my intention. So we've added some stem looking things for our background. And you know what? I'm going to spritz it. You know how I like my spritzing. I'm going to spritz just a little bit just to add a little texture to that background. Okay. Now this is going to obviously dry very light. Let me zoom in and see if I can show you what the water did to those trees. See the texture happening right in here where I spritz the water so that the distance trees have a little bit of texture without having to put too much labor into it. And I use my fine mister for that. The rest of the time I'll probably be using this bigger mister. Um, it's a, just a bigger mister model. The first one was the fine one that I bought at uh, the art store. Let's go back to our full size image. I gotta let this dry for just a minute. It still feels pretty damp, so I'm gonna use the dryer. Okay, now that that's dry, I'm going to wet it again because I am going to do some sponging. And let's bring in, let's see if I still have some color on that. 
I'm mixing a little bit of uh, burnt sienna to my green so that it's not quite so overwhelming because it can get a little overwhelming. Okay. Before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and add his darker shadows. Then I'm going to go back into my light green and put in another tree right here. Add another one right here before that color fades away. And then we're going to go into some different colors just to this one's a little further forward so I'll bring him up. His leaves are just turning. This is going to be a fall one, as you can plainly see. Let's see if we need the lighter first. Okay. We'll put a little lemon yellow one over here, too. Maybe a little bush right there that's got flowers or something. And then you can come into your raw sienna with a little bit of red and add some color. A little more red maybe on this one. burnt sienna will give us some shadows and this one needs some shadows too I think I had and before this sets too much I am going to spritz it again because I want to show you how that uh, will create texture in your trees. And then we're going to salt a couple of them. I'm trying to do some darker brownish trees back in the background back here. Let's see here, we need a little more water in that. Okay. Um, okay. Now I'm going to spritz before it gets too far gone. Not a heavy spritz, just a little bit. This one a little bit more because he was dried out too much. Before this completely dries, I also want to put in some trunks for the trees. And I'll show you several of these that I did um, just in practicing and creating different effects. Uh, but you can just really vary and create a lot of effects in watercolor just with a little, or a little bit of salt and a little bit of um, water spritzing. I'm switching to a number two. I'm adding some of these before it completely dries because it looks better if if some of it is blended in, sort of hidden inside the tree, rather than all of it being sitting on top. I 
obviously I'm not spending a great deal of time on the um, trunks of the trees because I, the, the main thing I'm trying to do is show you effects that you can make with the water and sponges and salt. It's his main trunk right there. I've got a fat little branch coming off here. I can see the water is working, so I don't want to play with that too much. But we are going to try to put a little trunk here. Okay, that's just the ones that I wanted to put in before it dries. I love what's going on in here with the water. This is just a little tree. He's sprouting for the first time. Just a little guy. Okay, well, who's still wet enough to put some salt on? I think over here. And probably right there. And right there. So we'll do salt on those guys. And let this sit for a little bit and, and come back and see what happens uh, with the salt. But I can fill in some of these places right here where this tree is coming up against the other tree. I don't want quite that much light shining through there. It doesn't look quite natural. Same thing right here. This was my background that I was creating. I really didn't want quite so much light shining. Just filling in some spaces with my brush. You can do that with a sponge too. I mean, if you have a tiny one. Go back in those dark colors and fill in. You have to rotate your sponge every now and then. Uh, otherwise, you've got, you know, the same repeat shape over and over, which doesn't look very natural. And down here, we can add a lot of, like, darker brush. That's just some little bushes. Vary the color a little bit. Rinse my little sponges out while I let that dry for a minute. I think this one right here is wet enough to maybe put some salt on also. Let's just do that. I'm going to limit where I put it up top and not in the dark sections. Okay, now let, it, let's see what that salt does here over just a little bit of time, maybe about an hour. So we're going to give this one hour and come back to it. Okay. Let's see what happened with this salt. Okay, let's zoom in on that.
this is what the salt did this little bit of textures in here and right in there those little textures the salt did that and we were able to pull a little bit of texture out of this guy with it So then you can go back in and uh, you can darken certain areas if you want. Um, if you think that there's not enough shadow, for example, behind a certain area, you can go back in and add a little more shadow. But at any rate, you can see what I'm doing here. And it gives you a pretty good idea. This tree needs definitely some more shadow towards the bottom of the, to define some of these sections. And I am going to spritz him one more time just to give a little shape to those shadows. And then we'll put in some more stems. Put a trunk on that guy. Just add some stems here and there. Right here we should have a thicker one because something has to be holding up that part of the tree, right? And we'll darken that trunk this guy over here I don't and his trunk is just too light so we're going to darken that I know I'm not using the right brush for that but Okay, a few more trunks in here. And over here, there needs to be some trunks. Usually these really red trees are very dark. Uh, trunks <clears throat> the bark on them tends to be quite dark You just need to throw them in every now and then so that they're, you know, just sort of brings it together. And if you're, it's real far away, you don't even have to worry so much about this because as long as you've got a trunk that's holding it up, you don't really need a whole lot of detail for the branches. I did a whole bunch of these. This one right here, you can see what the salt did. This didn't have salt. This just this did this just had water sprinkles. This just had water sprinkles, and I kind of liked how that one turned out. I put salt on this one just so you could see the difference. This one was just water sprinkles, and that came out pretty cool. This one I used salt. And let's see here. Look at this one. 
the water did that. That's pretty cool. This is my favorite. That's just water, no salt. Just water splattered and splashed every now and then, and then let dry a little bit, and then splattered again. And then I just threw in some stems. That's probably my favorite one. So, I hope that those give you some ideas on how to do bunches of trees in a couple of different ways. And, of course, you can use all kinds of colors. Um, I just used a limited palette because I'm using my beginner palette over here. My lessons are mostly geared to beginners. So, Okay, well, you guys have a wonderful day. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and check back with me next time. If you subscribe, then you'll get a little ding, a little bell, a little ding, and let you know that uh, that I've got a fresh video out. I do believe I'll be doing some flowers. It's been a bit since I've done flowers, and I thought I would do a flower demo. And uh, I don't know what kind of flower yet, but it'll be fun. And watercolors can do really nice effects with flowers. So I look forward to seeing you guys um, with the next video. And keep painting!